Chapter 22 In the middle of the night, Dominic and Francesco were suddenly awakened by the sound of heavy footsteps on the ladder leading to the loft where they slept. Francesco, come, Father Tommaso whispered in the darkness as the light from his lamp lit his worried face. It's Salvatore. He's worse. They quickly awakened Antonio, and the three hurried down the ladder. They found Salvatore lying in the bedroom, groaning and doubled over with pain. Chalky white and drenched with sweat, he didn't even notice that they had entered the room. Signora Giuselo sat by his side, softly praying and fingering her rosary beads. Vittorio, take the little one out to the courtyard for a drink, Signora Giuselo whispered to her husband as she guided them all back into the hallway. Antonio began to protest that he wanted to stay, but the sadness in the old woman's eyes quieted him with one glance, and he hurried off after Signor Giuselo. "'What is it, Signora?' Francesca whispered. "'He'll be well enough to travel by morning, won't he?' The old woman shook her head. "'But the saints' relics, they'll bring down the fever. Salvatore will get better. He has to get better today,' insisted Francesco, clutching her arm. "'He's so very sick,' she whispered. "'The fever is too high. "'Salvatore has said his prayers and received his last rites,' "'Father Tommaso whispered, placing a hand on Francesco's shoulder. "'No, Father!' Francesco cried. "'Don't say that! "'He's going to get well. He's got to. "'He's got to get to America so he can be a cowboy!' "'His words trailed off into a sob. You must be strong, Francesco, for Antonio, urged Father Tommaso. Go to him now. He would want you beside him. Francesco followed Father Tommaso to the bed. Dominic stared from the doorway, unable to comprehend what he was hearing. How could Salvatore, who was so strong and alive, be dying from a simple stomach ache? Salvatore was too young to, got, to die. It wasn't possible. It wasn't fair. "'Can't you call an ambulance?' Dominic whispered. Signor Giuselo looked puzzled, and Dominic realized that there were probably none around. "'What about a hospital? Isn't there a hospital we can take him to?' The old woman sighed. "'The malaria has killed so many there. He is better off here.' Francesco looked at Dominic, his dark eyes heavy with sadness. "'He's asking to see you,' Francesco said." Dominic walked to Salvatore's bedside, where he found Salvatore lying, his eyes half-closed. His face was flushed with fever, and his forehead beaded with sweat. Francesco gently laid a hand on his brother's cheek and whispered into his ear, "'Hey, cowboy, what are you doing just lying there? You should be up practicing your rope tricks.' Salvatore grimaced. "'Francesco, I'm afraid,' he gasped. Dominic could see the pain in his eyes as he struggled to speak. Don't be afraid, Salvatore, Francesco said firmly. You will get better. You will. And we'll get you on the boat to America tomorrow. I promise. Salvatore closed his eyes and shook his head. That's not what I'm worried about. I'm afraid. I'm, I'm so afraid. Don't worry, Dominic tried to assure him. You're going to get well and be a cowboy in America. No, it's not that, Salvatore sighed. Come closer. Dominic leaned over the bed with his ear to Salvatore's pale lips. It's horses, Salvatore gasped. Horses? Yes, horses. I'm afraid of horses, Salvatore admitted in a weak whisper. We never could afford one. I've never been able to ride a full-sized horse. How can I be a cowboy if I'm afraid of my horse? horse. Salvatore groaned, but his eyes were fixed on Dominic. Well, Dominic hesitated, trying desperately to comfort his friend. I don't think you have to worry too much about that. No, Salvatore whispered. No, Dominic told him, because I think once a cowboy meets his horse, it's like meeting your best friend. You recognize one another right away and just don't know and ju know just what to do. I hope he recognizes me, Salvatore said, struggling to get the words out. The pain overtook him and he groaned loudly. He will, Dominic assured him. 
You'll be a great cowboy with a great horse and your lucky buffalo nickel. Dominic reached into his pocket and pulled out his nickel. He felt sorry he hadn't given it to Salvatore sooner. Dominic pressed it into his palm, now as a faint smile crept onto Salvatore's face and his eyes began to close. That's right, you get some rest now, Dominic whispered. If you're going to be a cowboy, you've got to get plenty of sleep. Francesco, Salvatore called to his brother, do you hear? Francesco leaned over the bed. Hear. What do you hear? The bells, Salvatore whispered, his eyes closing. Don't you hear the bells? Salvatore gave out a final gasp. His eyes flashed open for a second and then quickly closed. Salvatore, Francesco cried, don't, please don't go. He lowered his face onto his brother's chest and began to sob. Dominic stood staring at the old buffalo nickel that had fallen from Salvatore's limp hand onto the faded feather bed. Can you hear me, Salvatore? Open your eyes! Please open your eyes! Francesco begged. Violetta nuzzled her way into his lap to comfort him. Oh, my sweet, Signor Drusilla whispered, placing her hand on Francesco's shoulder. He no longer hears. Dominic closed his eyes tight, fighting back the cry that was building up inside him. And as he listened to Francesco's muffled sobs and the Signora's whispered prayers, he suddenly heard a melody coming from the courtyard. Dominic recognized the tune at once. A tear rolled down his cheek as he heard Antonio's concertina began to play, Home, Home on the Range.